even though this is a great car and it's a great alternative to diesel when you're running E85 in a sense that you want to be clean, I think E85 is the absolute worst fuel for all sorts of reasons and convenience is just one of them. The difference here is that if you go to Gas Buddy and, and look for a station, you know, you can find prices and you can find stations that have diesel or 87 octane or 93 octane or 91 depending on where you live and and Gas Buddy will will pretty much give you all the information you need. Not for E85 because guess what? Gas Buddy does not list E85 stations or prices. So you can go out there and look for information on E85 and you'll find that it's very difficult to find current prices and the current situation with those websites is that they will find something within 25 miles. Usually there's two or three stations. And then in addition to that, with between those stations, they don't really disclose the current fuel price. They only disclose how much more economical ethanol is compared to 87 octane. But, you know, in comparison to, oh, diesel stations are hard to find. Oh, uh, I don't think so because diesel stations are everywhere when you compare that to E85. Now, obviously you can't put E85 in every car. They have to be made to accommodate that much ethanol in the fuel. In the Audi A4, you wanna look for three particular things. The first one is, it must be Quattro all-wheel drive. Second thing is, it must have the Tiptronic transmission. And the third thing is, the engine must have a metal intake. But there is a shortcut to figure this out. If you go to the fuel filler tab, you'll see a label that says E85. Then you're good to go. Right now, I am driving to the nearest E85 station, and that nearest E85 station happens to be 12 miles from my house. And I happen to be 12 miles from downtown Austin. So if you live downtown, you're talking about a close to 50 mile round trip just to refuel. You're gonna burn how many gallons of fuel? Maybe three, maybe four, just to make a round trip. And price may look like an advantage. When I filled up last time, it was $1.55 a gallon. It was actually a disadvantage because your fuel economy is worse than 93 octane fuel. And just like that, we are on E85. The car automatically knows and adjusts, and I will now expect a lower fuel economy, but way better performance. As E85's major component is ethanol, we are definitely able to reduce our consumption and need for crude oil. Gasoline is made from 54% of a single barrel of crude as diesel is made from 38% of a barrel of crude. By reducing the ability to require crude, we are able to evolve and pioneer new technologies for biomass, ethanol, and biomass clean diesel fuel, which is a benefit. And there are a few interesting tidbits that I learned when I did some research on E85, in particular to government stats and how that would compare to diesel. And essentially the quick thing is that there is a carbon offset with E85 similar to the carbon offset with biodiesel. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration at EIA.gov, they have an interesting tidbit of information on one of their web pages. And that's right here in this one paragraph. 
Under international agreement, CO2 from the combustion of biomass or biofuels are not included in national greenhouse gas emission inventories. Most of the retail gasoline now sold in the United States contains about 10% fuel ethanol, or E10, by volume. Burning a gallon of E10 produces about 17.68 pounds of carbon dioxide that is emitted from the fossil fuel content. If the carbon dioxide emissions from ethanol combustion are considered, then about 18.95 pounds of carbon dioxide are produced when a gallon of E10 is combusted. About 12.72 pounds of carbon dioxide are produced when a gallon of pure ethanol is combusted. So what this tells me is that ethanol is definitely greener, but we're already using it in our current gasoline to skew our greenhouse emissions numbers. So did you understand that? What this means is that even though diesel can be made from vegetable oil, which is essentially a different distillation for ethanol from the same source like corn, diesel is counted as crude. So ethanol is painted a pretty picture and diesel, which has 45% more energy efficiency than ethanol from the same source, is counted as a polluter according to the government that supports the subsidy for ethanol fuel production. What a waste! Not keen to give up at this point, I did a bit more research through the U.S. Energy Information Administration at EIA.gov and found another interesting piece of tidbit about use of fuels. And right here in this paragraph is the juicy bit. It states, on an equivalent energy basis, motor gasoline, which contains up to 10% ethanol, was estimated to account for 99% of light duty vehicle fuel consumption in 2012. Over half of the remaining 1% was from diesel. All other fuels combined for less than half of 1%. The widespread use of these fuels is largely explained by their energy density and ease of onboard storage, as no other fuels provide more energy within a given unit of volume. So are they saying diesel is a 1% fuel? Or are they saying that the numbers here are in favor of gasoline and ethanol because no one really uses diesel in the first place? In either case, why is diesel getting such a bad rap if over half of the remaining 1% of energy basis was from diesel fuel? I'm not going to ask you to believe me, but I will ask you to believe the U.S. Energy Information Administration once again at EIA.gov because on their biofuels page that explains ethanol and biodiesel, here we have an inf interesting piece that talks about how biodiesel burns much cleaner than petroleum diesel. I know that's obvious, but to some of you, maybe you should read this. Biodiesel is non-toxic and biodegradable. Compared to diesel fuel, which is made from petroleum, Biodiesel produces fewer air pollutants like particulates, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, hydrocarbons, and air toxics. However, biodiesel does slightly increase emissions of nitrogen oxides. Now, that's very inform interesting information because a lot of people complain that diesels are the source of a lot of pollution. Yet, there's another piece of information here that basically says the negative environmental impacts of land clearing may be greater than any potential benefits of using biodiesel produced from soybeans and palm oil trees. Well, what about ethanol and corn? You have to produce a lot of corn to produce a lot of ethanol. And how are these things green in the beginning? Like, What makes them so efficient? Aren't we farming these things and then producing fuel out of them? Well, we're going to look right here. Biodiesel may be considered carbon neutral. Let me read that again. Biodiesel may be considered carbon neutral because the plants used to make biodiesel, such as soybeans and palm oil trees, absorb carbon dioxide as they grow. The absorption of CO2 offsets the CO2 produced while making and, and using biodiesel. Today, most biodiesel is made from soybean oil. About half of biodiesel producers are able to make biodiesel from used oils or fats included recycled restaurant grease. That's, that's really cool, in my opinion, because regular diesel is 
B2, meaning that it's 2% biodiesel in the first place. You can't get pure diesel gasoline or pure diesel fuel. But what you can get is a higher blend of biodiesel and you get the benefit of offsetting your carbon dioxide and particulate carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, and hydro hydrocarbon and air toxic pollution. So let's see what E85 can do for us. So what's currently happening right here is the government and a lot of other factions are comparing E10 gasoline, which already has lower greenhouse emissions because of the ethanol content in the gasoline, and they're comparing that to straight up D2, B2 diesel that has only 2% biofuel mixed in. That's an unfair advantage that they're giving to gasoline powered vehicles, which already accounts for 99% of all of the consumption in the first place. So I'm not really content on these answers. And I'm really perplexed at this because, you know, people tout hybrids as very green cars. Yet when I did a search for E85 compatible vehicles, Toyota hybrids, the Prius even, doesn't even accept E85. So how can you have this, oh, look at me, I'm holier than thou green image when your hybrid doesn't even account for E85 consumption, which would even further reduce greenhouse emissions? You're not really giving me the picture that you're very green when all I have to do is fill up my diesel car with more than 5% biodiesel and blow your consumption and your carbon offset out of the water. Here I am again at the U.S. Energy Information Administration website, EIA.gov, and immediately I'm reading the same sort of information that I read about biodiesel. And in particular, ethanol is also non-toxic and biodegradable. And they state that unlike gasoline, pure ethanol is non-toxic and biodegradable. Where have I read that before? And it quickly breaks down into harmless substances if spilled. They didn't mention that about the biodiesel. Then it goes on to state that chemical denaturants are added to the fuel ethanol about 2% by volume, and many of the denaturants are used are toxic. What the f- Huh? So it's, it's non-toxic and biodegradable, but chemical denaturants added to it at 2% by volume are toxic? I don't get that. I do not get that at all. And similar to gasoline, ethanol is a highly flammable liquid and must be transported carefully. Okay, that's good to know. But as I go and read more information, I'm seeing the same thing again about the differences between regular crude-based fuel and our new wave of biofuel. And in particular, it talks about the impact on our environment for such things as clearing land just to grow the product or the biomass that is used to create the fuel. And we're, we see it here. The U.S. government is supporting efforts to produce ethanol with methods that use less energy than conventional fermentation and that use cellulosic biomass, which requires less cultivation, fertilizer, and pesticides than corn and sugarcane. Cellulosic ethanol feedstock includes native prairie grasses, fast-growing trees, sawdust, and even waste paper. And up here, we have that same information we had before on biodiesel, which seems to be excluded most of the time. But here we can see that ethanol can be considered carbon neutral because the plants used to make fuel, such as corn and sugarcane, absorb carbon dioxide as they grow and may offset the carbon dioxide produced when ethanol is made and burned. In the United States, coal and natural gas are used as the heat sources in the fermentation process to make fuel ethanol. The impact of greater ethanol use on net carbon, dioxi carbon dioxide emissions depends on how ethanol is made and depends on whether or not indirect impacts on the land use are included in the calculations. Growing plants for fuel is a controversial topic because some believe that the land fertilizers and energy used to grow biofuel crops should be used to grow food crops instead. I did 245 miles on a single tank of E85, and 245 miles 
seems to be about my average for an Audi A4 according to my Fuley stats. The engine sounded throatier, but the closest E85 station to me is 12 miles away. And I'm sorry, but you're talking about a 48 mile round trip from downtown Austin. In those 48 miles, you can consume a single gallon of diesel in a Jetta TDI, or you can consume three gallons of E85 in an Audi A4. One gallon of diesel is $2.69, and three gallons of E85 will cost $4.65. I could go on and on, but a 50 mile trip takes one fifth of your complete range on a full tank, while the fuel E85 may be cheaper. It's more expensive in the long run. And by long run, I mean only 240 miles on your tank. The long run for 93 octane or 91 octane is over 300 miles. However, a diesel Jetta can do 600 miles. So how many miles do you want to fill up? Every 245 miles, every 300 miles, or every 600 miles? Over the course of many of my vehicle tests, I have logged and recorded thousands of miles and hundreds of tank fill-ups on my Fuley status account. And if you go to my dieselreview.net website and go to the Fuley MPG stats link, you'll be able to see my current fleet status. At this point, the 2015 Audi A4 on solely E85 has returned me 17.8 average miles per gallon. And in comparison to the same car on premium fuel, I have actually achieved a higher miles per gallon consumption of 21.4. So what this tells me is that E85 is not as efficient as premium fuel, although it may be a little greener. Keep in mind that this fuel is still 10% ethanol, whereas E85 is minimum 70% ethanol and maximum 85% ethanol. This looks pretty good. However, I drove a car a long time ago that blows this all out of the water and even cuts carbon dioxide emissions by more than half and more than doubles my fuel economy. And that would be a very similar car to the A4. It's actually the Volkswagen Jetta TDI. So as you see here, I've done 59 fuel ups in this clean diesel car. And over the course of its lifetime that I've had it, I averaged 42.4 miles per gallon. Now, in my mind, in the long term and the short term, this Volkswagen Jetta is definitely the better option if you want to be greener and more economical. But if you've never driven a diesel car and you've never driven a clean, efficient, clean burning E85 car, all I can tell you is don't knock it till you try it.